Good morning. Yeah, looks like I already had everything open. Get out of here, Visual Studio. Somehow I opened it twice. <clears throat> Alright, well we're going to get started here in just a second. I need to organize my thoughts. So let's see. Well, what what I need to do today is I've got a whole list of stuff. Basically, I need movement working properly. Um, at least we need to start working on a new type of movement. I've got all these tasks. It's basically like we need to overhaul how we actually do all the movement. Make it so that you know his his running works properly. <coughs> So we should probably break it up into parts that we want to work on. Because I'm not really sure where to start. So let's start with just building the editor and then we get started. Well, let's make sure we have an area to run in. I guess that's what we're going to need to start with is we're going to need to work on the running animation. And and systems for that. Yeah, I'm just kind of waking up here. It's 2.30 in the morning. Uh, the perfect time to start your day. Alright, so... So we need. You know, this is our this is our camera test level. So we should probably move to our movement test level. Well, camera test is probably a decent place for this. All right. What we're gonna need to do is. And get new frickin' music. I'm just gonna extend this running track for the level. By quite a bit. So we'll have something in the background so we can kind of see our relative motion. All right, let's save that and throw our throw our camera in there. Where is our camera? So let's throw ourselves down right there. 
Uh, well, today I'm going to be working on the movement stuff. So what we want to do is get Vitey so that he's actually... Like right now, we just have this very simple... He starts running and then, you know, stops running and all that sort of stuff. Also, good morning. Yeah, it's, it's 2 in the morning here, so... Excellent time. So we're going to start off by uh, removing some of those things. We are going to start, I guess actually putting in some abilities like so we need to free up some of these keys here so we got like the dash ability and all that stuff and we're gonna need to actually do all that yeah Lucas go hang out with your with your friends <laughs> like especially if they're traveling internationally Alright, yeah, we had figured out that we were basically going to be calling our movement stuff through the interfaces for, like, Bitey Movement and other things like that. Alright, Lucas, have a good one. So I want to remove the... This is if the B key is, is pressed, we'll do all this stuff. Well, what we want is this thing here, I believe. To go down to there. This, this blueprint system sometimes just is annoying to deal with. Because these lines that you drag around um, with the reroute nodes are just not the best. Because I can't, I can't do what I want. But that's probably because I need to organize things a little bit better. Like if I organize things into functions, I probably would know a little bit more about it. Or maybe I should just always be going off to the right like that. You know, that's just what I should be doing. Anyway, I need to hook up these things here. So let's see if I grab all of these. Ah, I wanted to move these things. It's hard to it's hard to click on everything I want. It's like a giant waterfall of wires. Alright, so we're gonna control our We're going to have all of our abilities and stuff like that inside of this. Um, so let me think. Should I have a function here that and I should call it something? Like, why don't we call it um, the trigger dash or um, dash ability? Or I guess this is like what I want. What I'm thinking is you press the B key. Um, when you're holding a direction and your character will kind of charge forward, you know, will speed up. And um, we'll change kind of that to, you know, you Bitey kind of runs up to a certain speed and then gets going and then jumps into a, a higher speed. And, and, you know, his gait changes and if you hit the V key, like he does it faster, you know, he can skip to the next the next thing. Um, maybe I shouldn't start with that. So why don't we um, just do the dash ability description? No. Um, 
Can I rename? There it goes. Dash building. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is, if I go to the event graph here, I want to copy this stuff and throw it in here. So we just do it like this. And I guess we don't really need these outbound connections. I haven't really done anything with blueprints with functions, so this is the first time that I'm messing with it. So I guess there's no return value for this function. So what I'd like to do is call a function. Can I just like throw this right here? Oh cool, okay, so I can. So what I'll just do is do that. Remove this. So we can just kind of do stuff like that, which is actually pretty cool. So maybe I should do a little bit more of dealing with all this. Just split these off into functions. Maybe I should make another one for the movement and do that. So why don't we just start off kind of organizing our lives. That way I can kind of wake up and we can do things. So this, this is going to be called um, directional movement. So let's snag everything inside of here. And this is where a lot of this, just making things look pretty is, it feels like you're doing work, but you're really not doing anything. It's like, what are you doing today? Well, I'm going to drag around all these nodes, and eventually it'll do things. It's kind of funny, actually, thinking about it. Like, you could write, you know, a program and all that sort of stuff inside of this just gobbledygook language, and you're just dragging around pins and all this garbage, and somebody look at it and be like, oh, this is a kid's program, you know, like, you could be doing this in kindergarten. You know, all the all the big colorful buttons look like Fisher Price design. It's yeah, that's it's how it goes. But yeah, it definitely looks like splitting things off into functions is a really good idea. And everything should kind of move off to the right. Like that's pretty much the only way to do this, isn't it? That's just what you should do. Are you probably complaining it's too easy? No, I'm kind of um, more complaining that I... It's something that feels like work, but it's not actually like useful work in some ways. Like you could reorganize all this random, random crap here, you know, forever. and it's not going to do anything. All 
Alright, so I can go back. God damn it, Spotify, get the fuck off the screen. I can now just call this directional movement. And I should be able to just connect this pin. Oh, come on, let me select the pin. Chunk it in over there. And this whole section here just kind of disappears. Let's make sure I didn't blow anything up. Alright, good. That appears to be working. Alright, so I'm gonna wanna also throw the jumping stuff off into its own area. I think all of this stuff So we've got our grace countdown stuff, we've got our trying to jump, and we've got our jump kill. I can get rid of all of this. Alright, so we've got the one way platform stuff and look up and down. Alright, so let's do the. a lot of a lot of random stuff to just throwing it in there I think there was a program back in I think it was middle school we actually had we actually had pins and wires and stuff like that. Where we where you'd build circuits in like software and then you'd be able to then build that circuit on a breadboard next to next to where you were. So it was like you had a it was an interesting class. It had a whole bunch of technology stuff, and what you would do is you had this program and you could design electric circuits on it and then and then it would tell you like what it would do and then you could go over to the circuit board that it had and then build it in real life with all the different components in the kit that came with it. And that was pretty cool. So that was the one-way platform. Is there a way to, let's see, we can make these protected, interesting, nice. So you could really just program your whole thing, just everything inside of Blueprints if you really wanted to. 
probably wouldn't wouldn't really ever want to actually do that. Could. So I'll grab the after image stuff here as well. Just like this. So one way platforms, after image. And then look up and down. Look up and down. Cool. Well, this is actually pretty easy to just break everything out. And then transition camera to start. Let's see, this is just calling transition to camera and all that. I don't think we need this. Alright, so we can just delete all this. Disable physics rotation. Set rotate physics bodies. Should rotate false. Oh yes, this is, we, we need that, yeah. Custom character creation, spawn effects, playing sound effects and effects. Well, we should probably find a better place to put all this garbage here. So why don't I do that? Why don't I just go ahead and make a content browser thing? And make, let's see, I should put it in somewhere here. I guess gameplay, maybe examples. Or where did I put them? I put them in widgets. Yeah, here we go. Blueprint class. I should. Dashkin game object. Dashkin. Let's see what what is it off of. What's the class that I actually had here? Is I believe is at the bottom of entity utils. One based off of the Dashkin entity object. Right. I can't make it off of the Dashkin entity object? I guess it's not a blueprintable class or something like that. So I need to actually make it such. Blueprintable blueprint type. So just like that, and then we'll be able to base something off of this. All right, well, let's save everything then. Build it and then get back to it. It looks like Adam is streaming now. What is this? It's not the weekend.
Oh, cool. He's actually adding some parallax layers. That's going to look really nice. Like it's it's Tuesday for him. What is he doing? I thought he only streamed on the weekends. It's his Monday Monday evening thing. Is it still Monday for him? I can never tell. It is it is Monday. What? Alright, so we'll just make this blueprint class here. It's based on the dashkin entity object. Alright, we can finally do that. And this will be example logic. Alright, so I'll open that up and I want to go to the player logic object and then we'll snag stuff out of it. So basically I want to take all of this crap I want to cut it and I want to throw it over in the example logic. So this is going to be like like SFX spawn entity create simple effect. Awesome. That looks pretty cool. Alright, so that's on startup. So we have on create, um, get component set after image actor. So get component by class, paper flipbook, create simple after image. Alright. Maybe I should break out some of these functions. And, no, I mean, this is probably good enough. Just some basic stuff here. Trying to learn maybe if there's any better patterns for doing these sorts of things. You know, like if I have a branch here, that visually it's easier if I just kind of actually branch. <laughs> you know, like make it, make it like a tree, right? Because that's kind of what it is. All right, cool. We got it all split out into functions. Let's just make sure we actually have everything working as it's supposed to. Which it looks like it, and we have this big long level here that we can actually start messing with. So why don't we start messing with it? Hello, Kento four fifty six. Well, we'll get back to. Get back to Pharaoh eventually, but you know, I gotta do work too. I can't just be playing games all the time. Alright, so it's player, and then we have the logic and logic states and all that stuff. Alright, where did we throw movement? Like, we have bitey movement stuff. Um, so.
So I've got the dash ability that we are putting here. And we have the speed or whatever that we have. So let's see, how, how do we want to do this? Now I actually have to think about what I want to do, which is always difficult. Ah, I kind of want to... So we have stationary, walk, Front, run, and then dash. And we've also got the overall movement controller. So the overall movement controller, we've got this. dash event that happens. Um, we'll get the state and get the current movement state. Attempting to dash at blah in state blah and then found a state. Okay, so we get specific states. Alright, so let's think about this. Um, we've got is we've got our movement controller and then we've got our movement states and these things are like stationary walk run etc and our movement controller is just our movement controller so what should we have do what um, so the movement controller kind of knows what the overall everything is so maybe we should have the movement controller basically figure out what state it should be in and then the states should determine what is happening. So like inside of these different movement states, it maybe figures out what animation to play, stuff like that. And the movement controller itself determines which state we're in. Okay, so movement controller should determine which state we are in. Um, the movement states themselves hmm This should determine which animation is playing, things like that. Um, so I guess maybe we can stop doing the animation stuff for the rest. I'm just trying to think. I'm just, you know, that's, that's a difficult thing to do sometimes. Kind of what exactly I should... I should have working here. But I think we should determine which state we're in and this should... What, how are we going to figure out what state we're in? Um, I guess our velocity? Um, if in the air or on ground. So I mean, do we need a jumping state then for our movement? Uh, probably do. It's a lot of complicated stuff, isn't it? That's our state change, and we got our initialization, and we have our update.
Well, let's see. Um, I kind of, like, what I was doing before was I had all the movement, or what we have been doing is we've had all the movement kind of just data-driven, where we have all this data stuff here for everything that you can change, like your movement velocity, your jump velocity, and all that. And it really, it's not super flexible for what we want to do, like adding abilities and stuff in here is kind of difficult to do. Like if you want to sprint or do like an air dash or something else, like it doesn't really fit too well into a data-driven model. It's like, well, what we want to do is we want to move forward faster. Stuff like that, which... You'd have to have your centralized movement logic know everything. So you can't really go make a new event. So I'm trying to think, like, basically if I have the velocity checks inside of this movement controller to figure out what things are, then, like, I really should just have the variables right here control what speeds um, that we're looking at for running and sprinting and doing all that, which makes a lot of sense to me. So, I mean, it's kind of like um, by making this movement stuff, I'm kind of remaking the system that I was previously using, just kind of getting rid of it, which isn't the worst thing in the world, um, but it has some implications that I might be redoing code or getting rid of stuff that maybe I don't need to. It's always easier when you already know what you want to do. It's difficult when you're like, well, how should I build this? I don't know. What's the saying? Like, the most terrifying thing is a blank canvas or something like that. So I think the biggest thing here is that we want to just get these animations. Um, so I think the first thing we want to do is turn the auto animations off for the character. And the thing that actually does that right now is fat sack. So how, how did I do that? It was for his digging animation. So why don't we just... Uh, grab that. So the move controller stuff here on initialization is going to need to do stuff. So I'm actually going to copy this into the example logic. Got a comment. This is going to be um, Getting notified when animations change. All right. All right, so we don't actually need this at all. Um, and our initialization logic is going to need to do this. It's going to need to set auto anims to false for our character all right so let's actually go open this up and see what it looks like so auto animants, auto anims are false. So um, this is what Buddy looks like now. <laughs> you know, so no, no animation playing. Awesome. That's exactly what he should look like. 
He's just sliding around. He's a block of ice. And what we want to do is inside of our updates. Actually, why don't I grab this and example logic, uh, paste it, and I'm going to need a comment for play animation. So I think today, pretty much, we're going to be working almost entirely in blueprints. Yeah, AAA game. There we go. He's he's got high high def textures. We just need to say 4K enough, and and then we can sell this thing for like you know two hundred dollars and have DLC and make movies and all that sort of crap. We'll be good to go. I mean, really, the hardest part is going to be figuring out what actor we can cast as Whitey and Lemony Wee. Alright, so for the update, um, we're going to need to figure out which which state we're in, basically. So we should have our variables for our speeds, I believe. So we've got like... the hell were we even calling these things before? This will be, all right, yeah, here we go. Walk speed. Trot speed. Run speed. Dash speed. And we actually have not just like dash, but we've got, I guess sprint is beyond dash. So we'll do sprint speed. So let's go and take a look at it. Movement velocity, passive velocity changes. All right, so what we want to do is we want to change our state to the correct state based on the speed. So um, how we're going to do that is with a lot of branches. So we want our, do we want to switch? Well, this is an interesting this is an interesting gate base basically um, so we're gonna get all these variables because what I'd like to do is be able to with something like this very easily throw it into something that takes a whole bunch of inputs and just has a whole bunch of outputs um, How did I do that before? I think it was in macros or something. So we had like these if else gates. Like when we have one, a new macro, which is I guess this will be a a threshold multi-gate. So the inputs we're going to have just input one, two, three, four, five. And this is going to be one, two, three, four, five inputs. So I don't think I can. I guess I should call this threshold multigate five <laughs> because it's going to have five inputs and five outputs. I think that's the only way I can do this. And it's important, we'll just basically build our macro library over time. So we have all these five input floats, and 
all of our outputs are, they're not going to be floats, they're going to be execs. So basically what this will do is make kind of a, a switch statement, but based on thresholds. So it expects you to pass in certain things. So we just need like output one. Two, three, four, and five. And we actually need another input here, which is going to be the value, which is going to be a float. I guess we also need an exec input, don't we? Yeah, so like just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to have conditional So it's basically what we do is this, if this is, this is going to be the greatest one. So it's going to be like, if value is greater than this, let me do these branches kind of like, so or should we do greater than equal to, I think so greater than or equal to. So it's going to be value for each one of these. And then it's going to be like so. Now is there like a multi-gate switch sort of thing? Or let's look at gates. Is there a multi-gate? Executes a series of pins in order. Um, without one, two. No, this doesn't work. All right, so we just need branches. So basically, um, what we're going to want is, if this is true, then do that. I guess this this final one just doesn't even matter really. Or do we need an output zero? Because it's going to be like sprint dash run trot walk stationary. So we actually need um, one more output. So kind of like this. Yeah, that's that's how we do things. Let's just try to make this as ridiculously look, as ridiculous looking as possible. <laughs> Um, so if somebody ever looks at that, they just kind of vomit. But yeah, there we go. That's our um, that's our shared gate macro there. Our threshold multi-gate five. Um,
so what we can do is just make a threshold multigate 5 right here and we just chuck all this stuff in here And that's going to tell us what state that we want. And our initial value, we're going to need to get the velocity. Let's see. Yes, this M current velocity and direction. This is this is what a float? And it looks like this is also a post update thing. So do we need to have a post update? Because we've got this normal update right here for our movement controller. We're doing this after we do all this movement. So yeah, we do want this to be played post update. <laughs> okay, so we need another thing here. Create a post update tick for the movement states and controller. And we need a get velocity magnitude, or just yeah, a get velocity magnitude and a get velocity vector. So we have the get velocity right here, but we need the get velocity magnitude. So let's call that, and we're going to return and velocity in direction. Yes. If in current state equals on the ground and it's going to be this otherwise we're going to return get velocity it's just the m current velocity dot size all right well let's call let's compile and call save all and then we'll close the editor so we can recompile it. Alright, so let's call this get velocity stuff down here. Let's also open this stuff up for edit, check it out per force. And then let's add a post update tick to the movement controller. Alright, so we got post update. And let's call post update.
And if the current movement state does not equal null pointer, we're going to call in current movement state uh, post update delta t. And I guess we also need the m post updating state. True and false. Because we need to set the, the wanted state stuff as well. So we can easily support transitioning between states without skipping a frame. Alright, so post updating state. Alright, we got that. And we need to go to a movement state. We need to add the post update here. And we need the post update right here. So let's go ahead and add it. So post update, post update, and then we're going to need to go back to set next wanted, set next movement state direct. Um, we need the transition. So yeah, if um, post updating state, and current movement state, post update, delta t. Alright, cool. So that should all be good to go. Um, we've got the post update hooked up, we've got the animation stuff there, and we should be able to get our movement speed so that we can set our animation properly. So the question is, how do we want to set our animation? Um, since we're actually defining this stuff in Blueprint now, it may be that we don't even need our animation lookup dictionary stuff, and we can just get it directly. Um, interesting. Because we have access to all the assets kind of just straight up inside of Blueprints. So we don't necessarily need uh, this big dictionary bunch of garbage that we already have. Like I can just I can just use it directly, which I might want to do. Like I think it might just be easier to do it this way than have like a big smart system that's data driven that's just like scripted out. Just just don't worry about having a big complicated system do it, just have the the thing itself do what it's supposed to do. Which is not a bad idea, I guess. Kind of I don't know. It's like it reminds me of one time I had a conversation with the tech uh, a CTO and we were making a, a game engine and I was very against making this game engine and he's like why are you against making this game engine and I was like because we should be making a game <laughs> and he just didn't get it I mean I think he got it after after everything but it was like we're spending all this time making all this technology and not making the actual game itself and I was just like this is not how you make games like we're gonna spend two million years here and we'll have absolutely nothing to show for it at some point you just gotta start writing code that you're gonna throw away if you ever move on to the next game and then of course it's like well of course who cares the next game you're gonna